I am French, non-Muslim, and uh, I am traveling eight months in India. I, uh, I am 18 years old, I compelled my 12 uh, in June. And so, uh, inshallah, if you, you agree, I will meet you in private, but now uh, I just would like to ask you um, about the Jews. Uh, maybe if I am not wrong, you said that uh, it is written in the Quran that Jews and pious are the uh, strength, uh, strong enemies uh, of believers, Muslim believers, Muslim. And uh, I would like to know how this verse can favorize peace in, uh, in uh, humankind uh, when we see the troubles between Palestine and Israel. Uh, how some Muslim and some Jews can uh, cannot be uh, cannot misunderstand this verse because maybe it can uh, provoke uh, it can provoke some uh, mis misinterpretation or if it's literally that uh, Jews and Muslim have to be enemies. Well, that's a very good question. That he said, I said in my speech, and according to the verse of the Quran, also reminded that chapter 5, verse 32, which says that strongest in enmity to the Muslims would be the Jews and the pagans, and the closest in love would be the Christians. So if they wanted to create enmity when they say that the Jews and the Muslims should fight, the Quran doesn't say Jews and the Muslims should fight. The Quran says strongest in enmity to the Muslims, to the believers, will be Jews. It does not say that Muslims should fight with the Jews. It doesn't say that. But it says that the Jews, by nature as a whole, they'll be against Muslims. And I told in my lecture, there are many Jews who accept Islam. There are many Jews who are good to Muslims. But as a whole, as a whole if you take, Jews as a whole, and the Christians as a whole, the Christians are closer than the Jews. As a whole. This is a fact. For example, the Quran says that the Jews are intelligent also. That's a fact. If they're intelligent, they're intelligent. That doesn't mean that it hides the fact. And the Quran also says that they will be as a whole a staunchest enemy. So this is one of the falsification tests. That today, if you want to prove the Quran wrong, if the Jews, the Jews get together, all of them, and they decide, let us prove the Quran wrong. At least for three, four years, we will be better than the Christians. Let's stop the war of Palestine. You know the Palestinians? The Jews were kicked out by Hitler. Hitler insinuated 6 million Jews. He kicked them out of Germany. The Arabs, the Palestinians, they do Al and Wasallam. Come with open arms. After a few years, they are kicked out of the home. Imagine someone gives a traveler his home to live and the traveler kicks him out of his home and he's shouting that he has taken my house and you're calling them terrorists. So what they have to do is let's get together and solve this problem. What are the problem is? Not forever. Few years. Four, five years only. And the problem is solved. So we aren't telling that the Muslims should fight with the Jews. In fact, the Quran says, even if your enemy wants peace several places, even if they come to fight you, it's mentioned in Surah Anfal. In the battle, if they want peace, give it to them. So Quran is always for peace. Quran is always encouraging them. But if a person does not want peace to prevail, what can we do? Islam is a religion of peace. It wants peace, but it even mentions facts. That means we have to be careful of the Jews. Not that we have to fight them. Unless they come and fight with you. That's a different thing. Imagine what's happening in Palestine, what's happening in other parts of the world. So brother, for peace to prevail, you have to follow the guidance of the Quran and live harmoniously rather than be enemies. The Quran doesn't say that Jews should be enemies, but they will be saying. Hope that answers the question.